could we be dealing with something that is a genetic experiment, uh, something that's a hybrid escape from uh, a laboratory somewhere? We kind of stared at each other for a few seconds, and then the thing that sticks in the mind is the eyes. The eyes really pierce. I really believe that the dog saved my life. I know that. I know that with my, my heart. Could wild panthers be stalking the outskirts of London? Can domestic pets sniff out cancer? Animal X investigates the weird world of animal mysteries. First, the hunt for a terrifying creature, one that defies explanation. The island of Puerto Rico is a place of beauty and tranquility. But the peace on this tropical paradise has been shattered the result of an alarming number of attacks on livestock that roams the countryside. The nature of the attacks is disturbing. The unfortunate animals drained of blood. The vampire-like creature being blamed for this reign of terror is named El Chupacabra. Chupacabra in Spanish literally means goat sucker. I don't know what it is, but uh, from what lies behind all these uh, necropsies, I know that there's something rare or strange. So it's also a creature that seems to delight almost and terrify humans. Animal X travels to Canavanas on the northwest of the island of Puerto Rico, which is believed to be the birthplace of the gruesome phenomenon that is El Chupacabras. Reports started to surface early in 1995 of attacks on livestock. These attacks were unlike anything seen before, and panic started to spread throughout the Hispanic community. The reports became more and more frequent, and were so consistent that they had to be taken seriously. Not even a person with a knife can make this sort of incision on an animal. And the animal has no blood left in its body. You can't see footprints anywhere, so whatever it is appears to fly. All the chickens have been sucked of their blood. All the descriptions of this abhorrent beast matched. Perhaps the most compelling and detailed account is that of Jose Miguel Agosto, who watched in amazement as this freak of nature crossed the yard of his garage. What Jose saw was a creature that was about three feet tall. It had legs that looked like a dinosaur's, and its arms were really short. When it saw him, it just leapt up into the air and straight over a fence that was about six feet tall. It hovered in the air before disappearing. The physical evidence that El Chupacabra leaves in its wake is the clearest indication that there is something out there that no one can explain. Dr. Carlos Soto is a veterinarian. He has seen firsthand just what this beast is capable of. Primarily the injuries were like uh, small puncture wounds, one centimeter in diameter. Inside the carcass, there was a big depletion of blood, okay? And in some areas, we can see like uh, areas where small portions of the uh, vital organs like liver, kidneys, or portion of the heart were just removed from that small hole. I don't know what type of animal could do that because uh, from the predators that we know, you know, that they, they will attack and they, they will destroy their prey. The more I'm seeing the carcasses and the more I'm doing the necropsy, uh, it's strange is what I'm seeing. It's very, very rare. The mayor of Canavanas is Jose Soto. He certainly takes the situation very seriously. He has based his mayoral campaign on ridding the town of the beast that strikes fear into the heart of his constituents. He has set up a team whose sole aim is to capture El Chupacabras. The mayor says that there were a lot of reports from people who had complained to the authorities about the beast, 
and they were frustrated as no action was being taken. The people demanded that he look at the reports. When he saw them, he had no option but to start a thorough search to find whatever it was. It has been a very difficult task, so it is extremely intelligent, whatever it is. An animal that appears to levitate, that sucks its victims dry of blood through a small hole, that appears to look like nothing any animal seen before. What is the chupacabra? Mr. Domingles is a farmer in Canavanas. He has experienced a chupacabra's attack and lost animals to this hungry beast. When he found his turkeys, all of them were dead. They were in one piece, but they were drained of their blood. Mr. Domingles believes that the chupacabra is the result of an experiment that the Americans have done. Are we dealing with the work of a real-life Dr. Moreau? The H.G. Wells character who meddled in genetics of animals with devastating results. Scott Corrales from Indiana in the United States is author of Chupacabras and Other Mysteries. He believes this is the most plausible explanation. The number of experiments that have been conducted on the Puerto Rican population since the 1940s. Uh, birth control tablets were first tested there. Um, Agent Orange was first tested in El Yunque. In fact, there are certain parts of the rainforest that are still fenced off many years later. Radiation has been tested in El Yunque. Could we be dealing with something that is a genetic experiment, uh, something that's a hybrid escape from uh, a laboratory somewhere? Chad Dietgen, a Canadian researcher, and Linda Howe, an investigative journalist from America, have both been to Puerto Rico to investigate the phenomenon. Very few wild animals left, especially large. Really, dogs are one of the few that could be responsible for these attacks, and I'm sure some of them were dogs um, and uh, just misidentified by people. Besides dogs, there was also the possibility of rhesus monkeys, which it was rumored had escaped from, from an American research facility on one of the islands off uh, Puerto Rico. We don't know what it is. Uh, nobody knows. Are we dealing with something that is non-human in an extraterrestrial category? Are we dealing with some sort of an aberrant um, animal crossbreed experiment that went awry? Researchers agree that there is much more for us to uncover about this mysterious creature. But they are in no doubt that people are seeing something they can't explain, and thousands of animals are being drained of blood. And until someone can prove otherwise, the legend of El Chupacabras will continue to terrify the people of Puerto Rico. After the break, Animal X goes in search of another alien creature, the Essex Panther, said to be living right on the outskirts of London. We look at the evidence, talk to the witnesses, and discuss the theories. This animal is evolving, it's developing, and I'm absolutely certain it's certainly breeding out there. Welcome back to Animal X. They're ambush predators normally found in India and South America. Geared to kill, they're at the apex of the food chain. So what could wild panthers be doing in Essex, Britain? And could they be breeding? Wild big cats have been reported in Britain for many centuries. Until now, the sightings have, however, been sporadic and nearly always in isolated areas, such as Bodmin Moor. What is disturbing is that the sightings are becoming more frequent and the growing big cat population doesn't seem to be frightened of the bright lights of the big city. Looked over the fence and six foot away was you know, a panther. It was quite, I suppose, eerie or spooky to pick up these emerald bright eyes. This animal is evolving, it's developing, and I'm absolutely certain it's certainly breeding out there. Animal X travels to the county of Essex. 
Situated on the outskirts of London and including some of the suburbs, Essex has been a hotbed of activity for these alien big cats. Paul and Linda Buckingham are farmers. They were very skeptical about the existence of a wild panther loose in their area until they encountered it. We noticed some flashlights coming across the field. It turned out that three policemen had been called with regard to eight sightings of a black panther. Later that evening, at about 11 o'clock, we decided to drive our truck round the field. And as we drove down the side of the wood, we saw these big eyes looking at us. So we quickly wound up the windows, carried on driving. And as we went round the corner of the woodland, we noticed the panther running off into the distance. Frank Fitch is another Essex resident who has come face to face with this terrifying beast. The dogs were barking, uh, barking and pulling at the fence at the back of the property. Um, so I went to investigate to see what was going on and stood up on the garden and looked over the fence and there was a panther not six foot away looking straight back at me. And we kind of stared at each other for a few seconds. It seemed like an hour. It just stared at me and, and the thing that sticks in your mind is the eyes. The eyes really pierce. David Webster is a local artist. While out walking, not only did he see the alien big cat, he photographed it. I'm an artist, I came out here, it was uh, an October morning, to take some photographic notes. Well, when I took the picture, it ran directly to the left, a sort of a fast trot, um, for about 50 yards, and it paused at the hedgerow. It turned around and looked at me again. It was then I took the picture. I suppose the distance there was about 25 yards. The sightings are far too numerous to be ignored. Not only must it be accepted that the alien big cats are out there, it must also be accepted that there are a great number of them. John Hancock is the head of the Essex Big Cat Research Project, an organisation that is supported by the Essex Police Department who refer all sightings straight to John. We're going from like sort of a few sightings a year, to sort of 50 sightings a year, to 100 sightings a year, you know, to 100 sightings in six months. And, you know, what does that tell you? This is like, this is getting out of hand. This country is like a paradise for them. If you, if you, if you release this animal into, into air countryside, it's got no enemies, it's got nothing to fear. Um, it's got no humans that hunt it, and it's kind of top of the food chain, even above us. Now, these are very dangerous animals. They, they have killed people in the past. Really, we're at a stage where it is obviously out there. There's too many signs to sort of dispute it, really. Quinton Rose is a professional dangerous animal trapper. He is sure that alien big cats are out there. And in his opinion, Britain is in for a serious problem. The non-indigenous uh, carnivores which are in Britain at the moment uh, that are, uh, have become established, uh, each of the animals appears to be covering around about 250 square miles and they're constantly on the move. But one of my concerns at the moment is that they are coming closer and closer to people. Time and time and time again I'm getting sightings reported either in well populated areas or very close. The cats aren't afraid of us. How did this problem arise? Where did these fur covered hunters come from? And how did they establish themselves in the county of Essex? There's already been a very similar situation uh, with the Koipu in East Anglia. This is a large rodent that was released in the 40s and 50s from fur farms in, in the East Anglia area. It took the government uh, two and a half million pounds and over six years just to control the Koipu. Now, Koipus are stupid animals. They have very small home ranges, they're dead easy to catch. These cats are very different. Lou Foley is known as the Lion Man of Craig Lee. He has kept big cats for decades and he knows how this problem came to be. These ferocious cats, lions and tigers, beyond that, they could be bought in, in big shops like Adams in London. Um, they, they could be bought anywhere. There was no law. But in 1976, the Dangerous Wild Animals Act was passed, which made it impossible to keep big cats as pets. So what options were open to those who owned these powerful animals? Two alternatives. One, to have them put down. Two, to let them loose. The biggest majority of the people who, who, had the, who own these, uh, these cats, they, 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 they did turn them loose. They turn them loose, yeah. I know people personally will turn them loose. If these are a new generation of big cats that are now indigenous to the UK, 
the people of Essex are right to be worried. And if Quinton Rose's predictions come true, this is not the last we'll hear of the Essex Panther. From fearsome felines to clever canines, after the break, Animal X investigates the pet detectives. Domestic dogs claim to be able to sniff out cancer. This sniff was a true professional sniff. That was an amazing sensation. It was like making eye contact with a, with a whale. Welcome back. We all know animals can possess amazing powers, but do they extend to saving us from terminal illness? Time now to meet the pet detectives, dogs with an uncanny ability to detect cancer. The dog is still one of man's best friends. 43 million Americans own one, and half of them say they are more attached to their pets than to other human beings. But are our pets about to become the guardians of our health as well as our homes? Oh, I really believe that the dog saved my life. I know that. I know that with my, my heart. The dogs appear to be perhaps a hundredfold, a thousandfold, maybe more sensitive than humans. Animal X travels to Tallahassee, Florida to investigate the pet detectives a new weapon in the fight against one of our most fatal diseases, melanoma cancer. Often caused by UV sun rays, melanoma cancer is responsible for almost 75% of all skin cancer deaths, and someone dies of melanoma every hour. But in the last decade, scientists and animal trainers have stumbled across an amazing fact. Our adored and pampered pets have the ability to detect this cancer before more traditional methods. Quite simply, they can smell it. As an animal trainer for both the police and army, Dwayne Pickle has trained over 15,000 dog teams in his career. Where a dermatologist had, had written this article saying that he had a patient came in with a mole that was on the back of her leg. And uh, she said that her dog, which was a Doberman Pinscher, was always sniffing it. And whenever her clothes was off, it actually tried to chew it off. And so she said, look, doctor, you've got to remove this mole because it's driving my dog crazy. Now considered one of the world's top trainers, his belief in their ability to detect disease has drawn him into a major study at the Florida State University, where Dr. Jim Walker is leading the way into animal sensory research. The idea that a cell, which after all is a leaky bag, if you will, could have chemicals that a very refined olfactory system like that of a dog could smell, it seemed plausible to me. I was interested in learning more about the techniques. But even if these melanoma cancer cells give off a strong chemical odor, how can we use the dog's incredible sense of smell, which is 1,000 times more powerful than the human nose? Dr. Walker wraps live cancer cells in cotton wool and places it in a test tube rack. Only one holds the real melanoma. Dogs have a number of characteristics, uh, behavioral as well as their olfactory system that, as far as we know, seem to make them quite good at, at tracking down smells. I can train a dog to find anything that's different than the surrounding environment. So if cancer is indeed different than the surrounding environment, I can train a dog to find it. Though Dr. Walker and his colleagues are successfully testing the dog's ability to find cancer, they still don't know exactly how they do it. We do not know what chemicals are coming from the melanoma cells. We do not know what, what is there that's entering the dog's nose that he's using to make the decision. It seems very clear that the dog can find those cells using only smell. Medical researcher Natalie Tyre believes that the dog's incredible scent saved her life after two dermatologists were unable to detect cancerous cells in a suspicious looking mole on her shoulder. They explained that they had trained these dogs to send out the three types of cancer, skin cancer cells. They had a special little table arranged, and so I was lying on that table. And the dog 
went around and, and, and uh, indicated saying that it was melanoma. This sniff was a true professional sniff, a, not a friendly dog sniffing. That was an amazing sensation. It was like making eye contact with a, with a whale. Are we looking at a future where there will be a dog in every doctor's office? Dr. Jim Walker believes with the right research, that day could be closer than we think. Absolutely, it would make sense to try to incorporate the use of dogs trying to smell melanoma into mainstream medical practice. But will we trust our pets more than traditional medical practices? The bond between man and dog goes back to the beginning of time. And also just a, a hint of a suggestion of the possibilities of animal intelligence going far beyond the, the realm of our understanding. From the vampire like chupacabra or goat sucker of Puerto Rico to alien big cats creeping closer to civilization in Britain and our own amazing pets that can cure and save. The mysterious tales of the animal world continue to fascinate and perplex us. After all, it's said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.